Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from DevTactic. In this tutorial, I will show you the difference between uh, Ionic Virtual Scroll and Infinite Scroll. So um, you might know about the regular list, uh, ng4 iteration with all the items, but if you have an API and a lot of data, it's um, most of the time useful to use one of those two. And we will see how we can use both of them inside our app. So I've started a blank new Ionic app and we go ahead and first of all set up some basic stuff because um, we need the HTTP client module to make some uh, request uh, for testing. So this is Angular common HTTP and then add it to your imports. So that's all for the setup of our app. All right, uh, let's start with the infinite scroll. So Ionic infinite scroll is a pattern uh, where we have a list of items and at the bottom an infinite scroll component that will be triggered when the user scrolls to the end of the list. Um, perhaps we start with the view because it's quite simple. Um, perhaps some color just to make it look a bit nicer and then remove all of the stuff from the ion content. Now let's take a look at how it looks. Infinite scroll, so we got a list and we then got this infinite scroll. We can already add this to the bottom and call this load more. So we will implement this later. What you can do also is add something like a loading spinner of a, a specific type or a name or a threshold when this should be triggered but for now we can keep it like this. Then you need your iteration above. Now we'll make this some Ionic cards with an ng4 uh, let user of users and then craft a little uh, card ion item avatar item start and the avatar image is in this case user dot picture dot medium so we will see this from the api response in a second as well um, also perhaps an h2 capitalize so nice little css utilities as well user dot name first and user dot name last so this gives us the name of the user and then perhaps ion card content uh, just the email whatever doesn't really matter in this example so this is all we need from the view side so let's take a look at the controller of course we need the private http client http client from um, i think it's only like this i had problems before with the import so let's add a load users function and inside the function we use the HTTP client to make a get request and then let me copy in the snippet. Um, okay, so it could look like this. Um, perhaps I can also open this inside the browser. So calling it with results 20 will give us 20 results and we can also append a page and of course we then need a little variable here called page and you might already see um, that this means we have a sort or a type of pagination so we can call this with page 0 page 1 page 2 we will always get 20 results but they are different from page to page uh, this is like pagination on other sites you might have seen and this is exactly what we need and what the uh, infinite scrolling is for. So the results are not yet usable. Uh, we need to use, um, first of all we need res um, the results of this, so we need res results like this. And also we don't want to set this to our array, but we want to add it to the array. And therefore we will use 
this dot uses concat, which combines two or more arrays. So we combine our empty array in the beginning with the new results, and later on the new results will also be appended. Um, now, if we uh, edit like this, we got our initial users array, and we should see a list of users, hopefully, if I added no bugs. Okay, so we got a list of 20 users, but at the bottom you see load more is not a function. So let's implement the load more function. This will get the infinite scroll component uh, right passed through. And at this point, we should increase our page because the user is at the bottom. So we need to load the next page and then we can call uh, load users and we will also pass this through, make it optional. So this will call our infinite scroll. And then we should add a new block in here. If infinite scroll is set, we need to call infinite scroll dot complete, which marks the component uh, back to its normal state and uh, no, hides the loading stuff and all of this. And also I added something called maximum pages. So we don't get a page uh, count from this API, but normally you would get this with the result uh, of your first call and then set your maximum pages to the number of pages the API gives you. But in our case, you can check if this dot page is equal to maximum pages or perhaps uh, lower uh, equal whatever you like anyway um, then we can set infinite scroll enable to false so no more uh, infinite loading takes place so let's look how it this works now we got the list we get to the bottom and you saw the little spinner for a while and we got 20 more results we approach the end of the list and again new users are added we approach it again and I think now we've reached the maximum. Okay, you see, no more loading takes place when we now get to the bottom because we've hit the maximum pages. And this is already how the infinite scroll works. So when should you use the infinite scroll? If you have an API that supports pagination. If you can get uh, page results, smaller chunks, um, you can use the infinite scroll to get a response faster because uh, the initial response only 20 users and only when the user scrolls to the bottom uh, new users will be eventually added <laughs> uh, new users will be added not sure what's wrong now perhaps my connection is not that good at the moment i don't know um, but you see the infinite scroll is for pagination and displaying the data a lot faster if you can integrate this with your API. So this is the first part. Now let's look at um, the virtual scroll. Um, therefore we will comment this out or perhaps um, not really comment it out but uh, let's make it a bit different and close all of this and now we will set the result directly to this and we don't need the page anymore. And we will set the results to something like 200. So this means it's a quite big JSON response with a lot of data. 200 is already uh, quite big. So this is a good test. So now uh, let's see the API and the app. I see we got an uh, we got quite a bit of loading in the beginning, but this is normal. Um, and in the browser, it works kind of good. But um, if you get a lot more results and you run this on a real device, um, you will run into trouble and performance issues at this point. And there is why we can use the virtual scroll. So let's go to the home HTML bag and we don't need this anymore, but we wrap it now into an ion list and say virtual scroll 
and we have to pass in the initial array, which is users. And what we also can do is set something like approximate uh, item height. You can also set the width. Um, so this helps to um, give Ionic an idea how big those items will be. And the rendering will be a lot smoother if you have the right size here already. Um, let's copy this in here. But now we don't need the ng4 here. We just need to say my virtual item for the iteration is user of users. So it's a bit different pattern in here. Uh, then we still got the ion item. Um, it's still fine. We can leave it like this, I think. And the rest can also stay exactly like it is. So let's see how this looks now. Now we don't got the infinite loading, of course, because we already got all the information. But when we now scroll, you can see a little bit of loading there, uh, especially if I'm faster um, and you see that sometimes they're a bit moving. Perhaps 88 was not the right height. Can also make it to 20, I think, then we should see. So Ionic thinks the height is 20, but in the end they will be bigger. So we got a little issue there. Um, also, this on a device runs now a lot smoother and the question is why? So Ionic will only render the views we can see plus additional, uh, I don't know how many at the bottom, at the top. You can also specify how many it should preload. And when you scroll, it will reuse the view components with the new data at that position. So you don't have uh, like 200 or 1K uh, view objects, but only 60 perhaps or 30, I don't know, um, at the same time inside your view, which gives us a lot smoother performance for the view. Uh, one thing to note is that, uh, let me bring this in as well right there is this ion image and the virtual scroll advises that you should use um, uh, images within virtual scroll with this ion image tag um, to manage http requests but apparently there are a few open issues on github uh, and this is not really working as expected so um, it will look like this uh, and let's see and for me, exactly this was one of the problems that the image is not really loading later on. Um, I don't know if this will be fixed or with Ionic version 4, but at the moment this is not really usable for us. So we need to rely on the standard image. But anyway, the virtual scroll is implemented and you can see we only needed a few tiny changes um, in the syntax and the structure of our HTML to achieve this virtual scroll. So as you know, or as you now know about this pattern, there's no more excuse to not use either the infinite scroll or the virtual scroll to increase your list performance. So um, yes, lists can still have a bad performance, but if you use one of those patterns, you are set up for a better performance, definitely if you have a lot of data to be displayed. If you have any questions about those two patterns, uh, just let me know or comment on the uh, article on DevDactic. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and take care.